This is Doug Wirtz with the Heart of Santa Clarita, where we like to shine a light on all those organizations, groups, and volunteers that are doing good works in the Santa Clarita Valley. Today we're here at the Samuel Dixon Family Health Center, where we're going to be interviewing the CEO, Philip Solomon. Find out more about what the Samuel Dixon Family Health Centers have to offer and why they're really an important part of the Santa Clarita Valley. I'm here today with uh, Philip Solomon. We're going to have a nice chat today about the Samuel Dixon Family Health Centers and learn more about what you guys do here. So, Philip, tell me about the history of the Samuel Dixon Family Health Centers and how you kind of got started and how long you've been here in the Santa Clarita Valley. Samuel Dixon Family Health Centers, uh, the, the name itself was in honor of Reverend Samuel Dixon. Um, he lived in the Valverde, in the community of Valverde um, back in the 60s and 70s, and during that time, uh, he identified, you know, in that, in that community there was a great need for uh, health care services uh, because it was such an isolated part of, of this valley, and it still is, uh, but back in those days it was a very isolated part of the, of the valley, and uh, he recognized that they needed uh, health care services out there. So he actually started uh, providing health care services with the help of many volunteers out of his church. Um, and you know, when Samuel Dixon, when we came about with the health center itself, uh, we were established in 1980 in the community of Alberta, and what better way to honor the work that Reverend Samuel Dixon started years ago uh, but named the health center after him and, and continue the work that um, he started way back then. So what, what services do you guys provide to the community? The vast majority of our patients are either on some form of Medi-Cal or they're uninsured. Mm -hmm. uh, so the health care services that we provide, we have a special emphasis on the underserved, under, uninsured uh, population here in Santa Clarita Valley. With dental hygiene, uh, we focus primarily for our di diabetic patients. Uh, but recently I received a federal grant to expand that program from one day a week to make it five days a week Excellent. and offer it 40 hours during the course mm -hmm. of a week. So we're now able to reach out to more of our uninsured mm -hmm. patients, not just the diabetic patients for mm -hmm. uh, basic dental care, uh, but also the, the majority of our uninsured patients who don't have dental care services mm -hmm. that we could offer as well. So you started in Valverde, mm -hmm. where there was an obvious need yes. for the underserved there. You now have multiple locations yes. here in the Santa Clarita we Valley. Do. How did you select those locations? Where are they? And As you mentioned, Valverde was our original in 1980. And about 13 years ago, we opened up uh, our Canyon Country uh, Health Center, which is located off of Soledad in Camp Plenty. Mm -hmm. um, and then about six years ago, we opened up the New Hall Clinic here. Uh, which is you know right off of Newhall Avenue and in Carl Street, and when you look at on a from a bird's eye view of Santa Clarita Valley, we have Valverde in that location. Mm -hmm. We have Newhall on the other part of town, and then we have Canyon Country. So we created this kind of triangle of care. Mm -hmm. And you're not a free clinic, right? Correct. So how how do the fees work, and and is there a sliding scale? How, how do you charge patients who maybe are uninsured or? I don't want to give the misperception that you come here and you get free services. Right. However, um, if you're uninsured, we have a sliding fee scale based on income and family size. Um, and depending on your income and family size, uh, there's different fees that we'll charge you. With the, mm -hmm. the minimum fee is $36. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone comes in and qualifies for whether it's a $36 fee or $45 fee or 52 and I think our highest is 56 58 we very rarely have someone at, mm -hmm. in that group the vast majority of uninsured qualifies for the $36 fee but if that individual can't afford the $36 we'll accept whatever payment they can make towards it whether it's a dollar five dollars ten dollars twelve and we'll still provide all the health care that they need to include lab mm -hmm. work blood work Referrals to specialty care, which we again, as I mentioned earlier, we collaborate with Providence and Henry Mayo Hospitals, mm -hmm. so that those services, uh, they also have programs to help serve the uninsured. So that uninsured patient who comes into our health center that could not afford a thirty-six dollars, or even if they could afford thirty-six dollars, will cover that entire visit with our provider here, all the blood and lab work necessary, as well as the the specialty care that they'll receive as well. And what about those people that might be seeing this for the first time, are unaware of, of, of what you guys offer? 
that may have full insurance. They may be covered through their work or, mm -hmm. or on their own. Would they be someone who could uh, seek out health care here as well? Absolutely. As long as they select us as their uh, primary care provider, they, they're welcome through our doors. You know, a large part of providing quality health care is all about education and, yes. and, and screenings and, and preventative uh, measures. Are there things that programs in place that you guys provide here that, that address some of those needs? We have a lot of uh, literature that we provide to our patients. Our providers go through a lot of um, information about how they could uh, maintain their health and whatever their condition might be. We have a lot of patients uh, that have diabetes, other chronic illnesses. Mm -hmm. So our providers spend a lot of time educating those patients on the importance of their follow-up care mm -hmm. with us. Yep and also what they can do to, to help improve their health care. Mm -hmm. And then, like I mentioned before, we collaborate with a lot of other entities, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a nutritionist, they need to see any specialist for additional um, education, information, care. Uh, we send those patients out to receive that information that they need as well. Part of uh, young families is sports and activities and, yes. and immunizations. Um, do you guys provide those sort of services for Absolutely. the families as well? Absolutely. We tend to get a, a rush of... Right uh, around <laughs> August. <laughs> <laughs> right when school's about ready to start, we're inundated with requests for physicals, for vaccinations. Sometimes, you know, it's last minute and school started and the child can't go to school because they need X, Y, and Z shots. Mm -hmm. uh, so we definitely do that. And, and again, for the uninsured, we um, uh, participate in county programs to help get those kids vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So there, there, there isn't the reason why a child who needs vaccinations can't get it, whether they have a health plan or not. Mm -hmm. uh, we participate in the county programs to, to really get Find them. Find a way to, absolutely. to get them vaccinated. Absolutely. We want to make sure that our community is healthy. So how does someone schedule an appointment? Do they, do they need an appointment? Can you walk in similar to like an urgent care? How does that work? We prefer an appointment uh, because, as you can imagine, we, we see between my three health centers, and this is, New Hall is our largest one. We have six exam rooms. Mm -hmm. The other two have three exam rooms. So on an annual basis, we see a little over 5,000 patients, which account for over 15,000 visits. Wow. So it's, it's, we prefer that you call and set up appointments so that, that way we could, you know, uh, manage the schedule. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we do take walk-ins, and sometimes when you come in as a walk-in, if our schedule is booked, we'll find a way to get you in there. But it can be, it, it, you may have to wait a little bit, um, yep. you know, just depending how the day is going. Uh, but our preference is for uh, scheduling an appointment. They could call any one of our health centers to do that. What's the biggest impact or success story that the Samuel Dixon Family Health Centers have had over the years? You've been around since 1980, and, and you're... you're you're serving a, a great need in the community. What are some of the things that you can point to that, that are some successes? You know, we were <clears throat> founded and we serve here in Santa Clarita Valley. Uh, and we're the only health center that can say that here in Santa Clarita. Mm -hmm. you know, we originated in Valverde and all three of my locations are here in Santa Clarita Valley. And we focus on the, the greater Santa Clarita Valley uh, residents. The, the other success is that we're able to expand. You know, there's a continued to be a growing need for uh, affordable health care services here in this valley. So we were fortunate enough to expand into Canyon Country and Newhall to create that triangle of care. Mm -hmm. And I think the other things as, as the needs continue and as, as um, you know, we become more educated on really taking care of the overall health of, of an individual, it's not just the medical care. Uh, you know, there's mental health issues that you know our patients suffer from that mm -hmm. impacts their overall health. There's dental issues that impacts a person's overall health. So uh, just recently in September we've collaborated with um, California State University Northridge and we have graduate students who are supervised by a licensed clinical social worker and we are providing behavioral health counseling here at our Newhall Health Center for all of our uninsured patients. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, the federal grant that we received to expand our dental program. Mm -hmm. So those two expansions of those programs, it's, it's really to, you know, our patients are, are telling us, here's additional stuff that we need. And we are able to get the resources to, to try and meet those needs. So of you're trying patients. to round out the services and, and really Absolutely. meet those needs that are identified by your, by your clients. Absolutely. That's right. Because it's no longer just about providing just the health care. Mm -hmm. uh, you really have to look at, you know, there are social um, 
uh, factors that impact a person's ability to receive quality health care. And as I mentioned, the mental health aspect, the dental care. So mm -hmm. those are all things that really uh, impact an individual's overall health. And, and through the years, through the 30 plus years that we've been in existence, uh, we've grown and expanded and we're also expanding services to, mm -hmm. to, to meet those growing needs of our patients. There's going to be people watching this who might want to make a donation. Yes. They like to know where do our dollars go, what are they used for, and I guess one of the things that I would ask you is if, if you had a wish list mm -hmm. of those <laughs> things that you could, you know, you would need things with donations, what would it be? What, what, uh, what should people be thinking about donating for to, to help take this to the next level for you guys? Yes. Uh, you know, every year, uh, because our, our, we have a special emphasis on the uninsured, uh, as you can imagine, the cost of health care is nowhere near the $36 that we'll charge. Right. <laughs> if we get $36, we might get $5 from a patient and we'll still deliver the care. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's several hundreds of dollars to provide that health care for that visit, which mm -hmm. includes all the other uh, auxiliary uh, services that we're going to provide with the re special referrals, the labs, and all that. Uh, so anytime we are able to receive just m monetary donations, that goes directly to support the health care that we're providing to the uninsured. We incur hundreds of thousands of dollars of unpaid health care costs. Even with Medi-Cal, it doesn't cover their reimbursement, doesn't cover half of what it costs, costs to deliver yeah. the care. So whenever we do those things and we have fundraising events, it, it, every dollar goes directly to support mm -hmm. uh, those services because we have to close that gap between what it costs us, what, mm -hmm. we're, what our revenues are, and we have this big gap that we're trying to find ways to, to make that difference up. And, and other things, uh, sometimes we need um, new exam tables, you know, it, as, as our ones we use being around for over 30 years start mm -hmm. to where we'd like some new ones to, to, to have for our patients. Mm -hmm. Some medical equipment would be nice every so often. Technology changes all the time and yep. you know new computers are always a, a need for us. Uh, so those big ticket items that are costly mm -hmm. that we really have to watch our dollars for. Um, if, if we have individuals or companies that uh, you know have you know uh, the, the opportunity to donate those items to us is great. This office furniture and these chairs came from Providence Holy Cross uh, mm -hmm. so and uh, we also got some some office furniture and some of our other other waiting rooms from Kaiser mm -hmm. uh, so they've been uh, gracious to to let us know when they have when they remodel and they grow mm -hmm. and expand and they have other stuff that um, they know that agencies like us can can really put to good use they give us a call and let us That's know great. And, and we go out there and, and, and we are able to, to obtain some of these items without any cost of us other than than getting it from mm -hmm. point A to point B so you need dollars to cover the the ongoing costs of just the the medical care yes you need new equipment yes you know and and uh, and new technology or as, yes. as things improve over the Absolutely. over time as well so there's plenty for people to uh, to try to to get involved and how do they get involved if if they wanted to volunteer is there any do you need volunteers? Is there special training involved because of the medical nature of what you do? Yeah, there's, because of that, there's, <coughs> our volunteer opportunities are very limited. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. So the, it, it, for most of the volunteers, unless they have special medical training, mm -hmm. it would be helping with um, maybe filing or not filing anymore because we're all electronic now. Right. So it's really scanning of documents and saving into the Mm -hmm. the right um, electronic file so it's easy mm -hmm. access to our providers. If they're bilingual, it's great. They could help answer phones when we get inundated with phone calls mm -hmm. uh, to help direct calls to the, to the appropriate mm -hmm. um, individual. Um, if they have special medical training, you know, we have uh, interns from various universities that mm -hmm. uh, people who are, are training to become nurse practitioners or physician assistants. Mm -hmm. you know, my medical staff, my licensed staff will take on intern students who need their clinical hours. Mm -hmm. So we'll have those that are here that are volunteering but it's part of their uh, license procedure to get their clinical hours in and we're supervising them and giving them experience mm -hmm. that they need so that they could mm -hmm. uh, become medical professionals down the road. So mm -hmm. um, you know it's, it's very limited. Um, where we do need a lot of volunteer help, 
every year we have our rubber ducky festival mm -hmm. uh, end of September October it all depends mm -hmm. on when that park is available when we mm -hmm. where we have it at Bridgeport uh, but it takes a, a, a good hundred or so individuals of volunteers that help us put that one day event on so so people should be watching for uh, yes for that event and they yes. can sign up and, and be a volunteer to absolutely to help you raise some money they could they could volunteer the day of the event they could volunteer to help plan the event I'm always looking for community uh, representatives to come in and help us plan uh, I like to get the input from our community and they and they're the best ones that could tell us hey we enjoy these things at the last mm -hmm. event mm -hmm. these things uh, let's work on mm -hmm. uh, maybe we could uh, find other ways to help promote the event so we could attract more mm -hmm. people to it mm -hmm. so I'd love to have um, some community representatives volunteer on our planning committee mm -hmm. and uh, can they sign up for that on your website yeah they could go on our website uh, www.sdfhc.org mm -hmm. um, they could call any of our health centers and, and ask if they're interested in volunteering um, we have an admin um, uh, assistant over at the corporate office that will channel and funnel all the volunteer requests mm -hmm. and identify you know which location might work best for them where our needs are and we can match them up with that or if they're looking to help with our, our, our event that we have every year then she'll, she'll make sure she'll get their information because we're gonna start planning for our 2016 event end of January right around there so we that's start, just around we start, the corner yeah. we start months out in advance that's right around uh, the corner. To make this thing successful. So, so. one more time, what's the website? Uh, www.sdfhc.org. Very good. Thank you so much for your well, time. Well, thank you. I appreciate it.